1989 as the NPP, the Movement for Participation by the People. A more radically left voting bloc within the Frente, based around the MLN, but including smaller groups and a few independents. <coughs> José Pepe Mujica in many ways epitomised the internal changes undergone by the MLN, being one of its, one of its founders and a guerrilla fighter in the 1960s, a political prisoner for the whole of the dictatorship, and then a deputy, first a deputy and then a senator from 1994 onwards, and then from 2005 a minister and finally a successful presidential candidate in 2009. His attractive, deliberately rustic style made him the most recognised and popular figure on the Friendly's left as well as one of its most interviewed and humorously articulate spokesmen, precisely because it accords with exactly what he is. He still lives 10 to 12 kilometers from the center of the capital on the same small farm he bought several decades ago and donates most of his parliamentary salary to his political group. However, there was also a proletarian, as they call themselves, a proletarian trend within the legalized MLN, one increasingly at odds with it as the Frente Amplio as a whole became more openly a post-socialist centre-left reformist party. The proletarians had a more traditionally Marxist conception of the people and of working class and trade, in, trade union politics, and even secretly evolved plans for a politico-military organisation to lead an armed, pop, an armed population to resist any attempt at a military coup like that in June 1973, or even to lead an armed revolution if conditions were just propitious. Such thinking seemed to hark back to the movement's origins, but also displayed a nostalgic attachment to the hurly-burly and dangers of clandestine militarism. The theoretical underpinnings of the proletarians extended from quasi-Leninist to libertarian, and at its inception, the group included our MLN founders, such as Jorge Salazza, Julio Manedales, and Eleuterio Fernandez Huidobro, who was the MLN's semi-official historian and who'd become a senator two years before Mujica. At their high point around 1989, when they controlled all the major MLN and MPP media outlets, the proletarians' ultimate fate was forecast when, after they had taken it over, the readership of the MLN's main political journal collapsed. During the 1990s, the proletarians were gradually displaced as the ever-improving electoral fortunes of the Frente and the growing popularity of the MPP and of Mujica within it gradually convinced the leaders and members of both MLN and MPP that they could share power in an elected centre-left government under Vasquez's Encuentro Progresista. Zavalza was one of the few who steadfastly refused the enticements of centrist reformism, preferring resignation to what he saw as capitulation. The proletarians found themselves outmaneuvered and isolated, first within the MLN, then within the MPP, with a final public debate <coughs> between Salasa and Mujica in 1999. Mujica declared that now was the time for a friendly Amplio government, not a revolution. Salasa retorting that he saw little point getting into government only to have your capital of enemies as your allies. In 2009, Salasa still wanted to hand on to the young a lesson of insurrection. While Mujica's appreciation of the inequalities inherent in capitalism kept him a socialist, though he admitted he no longer felt he could even guess what form any future socialism might take. The whole general situation before the 2004 elections over the use of the River Uruguay and its quest to reform medical sewer structures are unresolved, though Mujica has said he will seek to deepen regional ties. Internally, the attempt to marry the need to represent the Frente's different groups at the government level with the equally imperative need for efficiency, initiative and skill has not always been successful. While some have felt 
that executive decision-making practices have made redundant much of the lively party discussion. Though fierce internal debate, however frustrating for ministers, seems, in my view at least, generally to have resulted in better policy. The biggest single change experienced by both Broadfront and the Tupamalas since the end of the dictatorship in 1985 is also the most obvious. The passage from being more or less effective voices in opposition on the streets or in Parliament to replacing the political elite by becoming themselves responsible for ruling the country. The MLN's version of that story is only a slightly more dramatic subset of the broad front's trajectory. In a way, the 12-year dictatorship was only a hiatus on the inexorable rise from the Frente's first modest showing in the corrupt 1971 national elections to a majority in both lower house and senate in 2004 and 2009. The MLN's journey from clandestine guerrilla movement all but totally dismissive of electoral democracy, to the movement for participation of the people as not only the majority sector of a legalized MLM, but also the most voted sector of the same broad front they had all but rejected offhand in 1971, is, however, not as great as it looks at first because of a set of principles long held by the MLM. In a very real way, the Tupamaros had no theory Instead, they privileged actions over words, evolving a methodology that was provisional to be determined by their assessment of prevailing circumstances. In the 1960s, they believed they could best help those marginalized and impoverished by the processes so persuasively evoked in Galeano's open veins of Latin America by forming an armed vanguard for what would have needed to be a mass revolutionary movement. In 1994, Mujica came to see that the, the, that the same end could best be achieved by convincing as many colleagues as possible to support Tawale Vasquez's reformist centre within the broad front. This move brought victory for the front in 2004 by ensuring, by ensuring that Vasquez got the vote of most on the left and also prepared the way for Mujica's succession in 2009 and for a possible more leftist move in the government from now on. However, as the return of the right in Chile shows, such victories are not definitive, precisely because elimination of one's political adversaries is the very possibility that has been knowingly and willingly relinquished. And this is why all sympathizers should hope that the broad front re-election and José Mujica's presidency do not, once again, make Uruguay an exception in Latin America. <laughs>